one of my eight lug swap and we'll be covering the front end of the Bronco. So I'll start by saying I got a donor K20 Dana 44 or 10 volt. They're really the same from the hub out. And um, having it prepped and all the parts collected ahead of time made this swap very easy for me. As you can see, the axle shafts are different, so be sure to mark them when you um, pull them out so you don't get them confused. Okay, so I cleaned up the axle shafts. Just a reminder, these are the eight lug Dana 44 outers off of the K20 Suburban. And these are factory Ford Bronco uh, inner shafts. I'm gonna replace the um, the U-joints with some new U-joints I picked up from O'Reilly's. Uh, I didn't go with any fancy um, high quality uh, U-joints as I actually don't use 4x4 very often. I just wanted to retain 4x4 and in the case I used it I would want something that at least was sufficient and worked. So th this, this is going to do for me. Um, I did give the uh, axle shafts a fresh coat of some rustoleum just to clean them up a little bit here are all the parts laid out and labeled i basically used most of the parts from the donor axle and mixed in a few new parts i have a comprehensive list in the description below now that we have all the parts ready the first step is to disassemble the existing hub Once you get the cap off, there are two locking rings that hold this in place. Um, the first one, you use a snap ring plier to remove. The second one's a little tricky. You'll see how I do it in the video. Uh, but after those two are removed, it comes out pretty simply. I will say it looks easy in the video, but it took me quite a few attempts to get this right. So don't get frustrated and just keep at it until, until the ring comes off. I'm going to speed through this part a little because there are several good videos on how to disassemble a hub already on YouTube. But basically there are two uh, locking nuts that hold the hub together. Uh, after that you have to remove the brake caliper. Uh, you can see me doing that now. Um, and then uh, really after that it's completely disassembled. I'm going to let the brake hang there for a little bit while I disassemble the hub. After the hub is removed, you have to then remove the spindle, which is held in place with uh, six nuts. Then the actual shaft can come right out. Be sure to put a pan underneath the front differential because oil will leak from here. After the actual shaft comes out, we then have to um, punch out the existing spindle studs. We will, we will replace this with some longer spindle studs you can use the spindle studs from the uh, from a donor axle or you can replace them with new ones like I did that are made for the the longer eight lug setup so after everything is completely disassembled the next step is to modify the knuckle and um, basically what that means is to cut off the caliper ears to make room for the new caliper mounting bracket you can see I'm drawing lines here and at this point is where I will make a cut with a grinder. Um, so yeah, I'll do that now. Alright, so there it is. I cut a couple of ears off. One here. The other one here. 
I'm going to give it a quick coat of black spray paint and then proceed with the uh, install. Here is the, the old bolt. Here is the new bolt. See how it's a little bit longer? Okay, so I installed the studs while the knuckle was still on here. And though it looks impossible, it's really not. You can actually move it and use a long punch and hit, uh, hit the punch with the hammer to seat the studs. Um, you can do these three on this side and then turn this all the way over and do the other three on the other side. Not impossible, I just did it. They're nice and tight and seated. Now on to putting in the axle. Axle with fresh U-joints. These are the ones we put in. I did that a couple of days ago. Get these axles in. So now it's time to install the K20 spindle in, in the caliper bracket. If you notice, I installed the K20 uh, spindle and then the caliper bracket on top and then bolt everything together. That's how it should be done. So there's two locker rings. This one that has a little nipple on it. That's the one that goes in first. So this is going to seat the bearing. I'm going to use all the original hardware from the uh, from the K20 Suburban. Now there's a lock ring. This lock ring, you see there's a little notch there. You just gotta fit that to that little nipple. It only goes one way. Moved it just a hair. Let's see if it fits now. Kind of a guess and check deal. Now, the other lock ring. Again, all these lock rings are from the, the donor K20. Put a little bit of grease on it. Okay, so assembling the hub is really the reverse of disassembling the hub. 
So you put the locking uh, manual locker back in and after that there are two snap rings. One that goes in on the shaft itself and the other on the outer part of the spindle. Uh, again, just a reverse of what we did earlier. So if you recall earlier, I had to cut the caliper ears off of the factory knuckle. Um, I actually had to grind it down a little bit further to clear the caliper. So the caliper was actually contacting um, the knuckle from where I cut it originally. So I had to take a grinder and, and take it back just a little bit more. You can see in this picture where I did that and now the caliper and everything mounts up nicely. One thing to note is the existing uh, Bronco brake lines did not bolt with the new calipers. So I had to get um, new brake lines. I took the opportunity to get stainless braided lines. Uh, again, I'll have more description below on exactly what parts I use for this. Well, that concludes part one of this eight lug swap. Part two will be the rear end where I will be swapping in a 14 bolt into my Bronco. And I'll show you how I did that in the next video. If you like this video, please uh, give it a like. Uh, click the like button below. Um, also, if you want to follow along, please subscribe to the channel. And, um, and as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next project.